Good morning, good afternoon uh, to all our guests, um, co-workers. Welcome to another Power Block on ARIA operations with focus today on workload optimization. Uh, your presenters are two of the four corporate cloud management business unit teams, um, starting uh, with Joe and Kevin covering the West and Central, and for the Upper East Coast, Deepak and Tom. Starting with Joe, I'll let them introduce themselves. So go for a first hour and I can come back yeah. in and do my intro. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Deepak. Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming. My name is Joe DiBella. I am one of the senior cloud solution architects, and I specifically focus on the cloud management portfolio. Uh, so a lot of you might recall we might know this as the vRealize suite of technologies, uh, recently rebranded to Aria. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about one of those technologies, one that I find particularly interesting. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back over to the others on the panel to introduce themselves. Mr. Fryer. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks, Deepak. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tom Fryer. I'm a uh, cloud management specialist on the East Coast and um, responsible for our cloud management portfolio of products. And uh, if you guys have any needs for uh, additional conversations after this, please uh, reach out in the chat and, and we'll get something scheduled. Thank you for your time today. Um, so I'm Deepak Anshinani, just like Joe. I cover for the cloud management uh, area, the solution set for the East Coast, work with Tom Fryer. What's in Abstentia is Kevin. Uh, Kevin works with Joe, covers the West Coast and the Central. He is getting ready for his marriage. Therefore, we clearly agreed that that was a little bit more priority um, than this. Um, I also like to mention Brandon Cora, uh, who's our inside sales rep, and he's based out of Austin. You guys may, as customers, uh, hear from him as well. Uh, so I just wanted to get the whole team in front of you. If I can figure out my mouse control. So the agenda um, for today or for the next 30, 35 minutes, why use RE operations workload optimization? How, what is it? Uh, how does one set it up and go into the GUI? We'll have a demo that Joe is going to walk us through and show it to us live. Uh, well, it won't be live, it'll be recorded, but we'll show it to you exactly how it works. Um, closing remarks and open forum for questions. Uh, we can uh, absolutely elevate you guys have the Q&A. The Q&A gets tracked uh, with it, with the recording, whereas the chat uh, may not. So if you can, if you have any questions, if you guys can please uh, put it in the Q&A, that would be appreciative. Um, and feel free to put them out there um, when whenever you have it and we'll get to it. Um, Joe should be monitoring it while I'm presenting. My both screens get taken up, unfortunately. Um, so we'll address them as, and I kind of see them up, up, up above as well. So um, thanks. Um, so why use workload optimization, right? Uh, are you ultimately responsible for the infrastructure for its applications? Are you looking at the infrastructure, the VMs, the ESX servers? Uh, your V centers and so forth and so on, and making sure that they're the apps are running properly and are at its optimal best. Is there a uh, unbalanced utilization of certain servers uh, in your environment? What if one of the apps uh, fails and then you need to drop everything in the room? How do you, you want to be able to monitor that app as it is business critical? Um, there may be infrastructure bottlenecks, you know, applications, organization networking um, where workload optimization may be able to help you with. Um, and then these are one of the things that if you wanted to optimize your environment, is that something you're looking to do uh, something better today? So workload optimization naturally does continuous performance optimization. Um, your environment may be growing crazy. Can you, you achieve the automated resolutions that you're looking for, your performance out of your VMs, um, ESX servers or your applications, um, DevOps uh, is deploying so many um, apps and they're deploying them at a very fast and speed um, based way that you are, it's hard for you to manage it and also for you to plan out the infrastructure needed to support that. Um, 
how do you ensure the clusters aren't getting filled up um, and beyond their target utilization? And then you're seeing the motion happening constantly and getting alerts for those things to happen. Um, can I limit the movement of the VMs as I was talking about earlier with the vMotions? Is your clusters and data stores getting too full? How can you get your team to build confidence and move the VMs around with a guarantee that, hey, when you move it to the, the additional set of resources that they're placed properly and within your guardrails and your utilization limits. So that way you don't create a domino effect, you know, move it in and then it says, well, you hurt your 80% threshold. Now you're moving it back out or uh, vMotion automation is uh, forcing you to do it and it's doing it automatically. You may be also facing some budget cuts and then reuse of the equipment, you know, you know, making sure that your Windows licensing or your database licensing like Oracle are all contained and within the limit uh, of your environment. So if you're running um, ARIA operations, by the way, we've had a rebranding. Uh, you can see my slide still points to the old View to Realize Operations Manager. So this is the 8.10 edition. And within that, what we will focus on today is the workload um, uh, automation, a workload optimization, which will automate your intended driven workloads and optimize the balancing for private, as well as your public clouds, which are VMware additions, right? So there's uh, AWS that has a VMware edition, uh, which is called VMC, or there's an Azure edition uh, called ABS, which is the VMware cloud edition. So is there a uh, Google based one. So whether this is happening on-prem or in your uh, public cloud, um, workload optimization can manage it throughout your enterprise. It is host-based placement for the private cloud based on the business and operational intent, right? You're going to place your VMs at the right, your applications at the right uh, host. Um, it will also look into your, if you, if you are licensed for vSAN, to be able to use that for workload and resync. So that way the storage allocations and the, the storage remotions are happening, keeping that technology in mind. Um, it is intent-driven uh, workload optimization balancing, again, for the VMware Cloud Editions. That includes VMC, A ABS, and UVC, as I mentioned earlier. It does integrate with ARIA automation. So for customers that have our entire stack um, can use the automation portion for the initial placement and then ongoing balance as well through automation and then integrate them together. Um, the next um, gen cloud management platform is shared with constraints with cloud accounts. So you can have multiple cloud accounts. Um, you can even have the native uh, cloud accounts as well that can at least be monitored through VROPS um, and licensed it uh, properly in reference to that. And then it can use uh, predictive DRS to avoid contention as we mentioned earlier. And we'll peel back the onion a little bit more in the next few slides. So consistent performance and optimization for the VMware cloud, it is AI powered. So your business in, intent could be software license optimization. Hey, maybe there's applications that you can reduce Windows servers that you can reduce. Um, you may have service level agreements to make sure that this thing is always below, uh, you know, 70% utilization. So if it does get a peak that it can scale out uh, and to be able to do so. And then managing your environment as well to not to make it, you know, prophetically expand out unnecessarily and that you're monitoring and constraining it in reference to it where the operational intent comes into the picture with the utilization in, intent, the placement in, intent as in you have um, access to it with the shortest uh, latency of your network so that way the end users are not being penalized uh, by going around the world to, to get to their access uh, of the application. Naturally, you're going to have buffers of compute storage and stack within the environment. And then if you do have the license for vSAN storage and policy and resync aware um, is all being considered when we're doing this workload uh, optimization. So in our example, we have two data centers. In this case, they are using vSAN. Uh, you do not need vSAN and Joe will go into that specifics. Um, what has happened over time is that, and this is a simple example, you can absolutely mix Windows and Unix application or Linux applications in 
your ESX environment. It's just showing you that the off balance that the left side is got machines uh, or the ESX server CPU utilization is less than the the right side where it is reaching close to 100% capacity uh, within that environment. And what in this sample a modeling is that we're going to figure out using um, AI to do the business intent to figure out where these things should be placed. And again, it's a simple example. And then also keeping your um, risk buffers in environment. For example, it could be your CPU, it could be your storage uh, constraints in mind and making sure they're below that threshold. Then enable through the self-driving engine, do the recommendations. Optimized performance placement is what you're going to click on and Joe will show that uh, button to you guys to be able to do so. And once it's done that analysis, it will place the right the VMs at the right data center. Remember, we are doing storage vMotion across from data center A to data center two. Um, and we just happen to, for illustration purposes, just pick that the Windows machines are on the left side. But more importantly, it's the utilization and the predictive placement of the VMs at the right place and not and, and providing you a risk buffer within that environment. And this can be manually triggered or scheduled uh, task or fully automated. So depending on what your environment is, you could absolutely say, hey, at 1 a.m. or whenever you have downtime or some things like that, you can absolutely schedule it out. Now, as day two comes around, um, these windows and a few of the machines are now having additional utilization and now they also need to be right sized um, so that can also be configured into the application aware right sizing versus the entire just looking at ram's utilization cp utilization disk utilization they can also be right sized and put in at the right place and or told to shrink uh in 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 the environment so the two vms uh, we shrunk the amount of um, CPUs in this case, uh, and then one of the VMs we we do some of the uh, the, the storage uh, or the uh, memory uh, constraints in reference to it. So just looping it in with um, workload placement, as I mentioned uh, earlier, Aria solution set also includes automation. So these um, two solutions work together. So automation comes in with the business intent, the app. Uh, service level agreement, licensing, affinity, and compliance comes into the picture, and the operations, RE operations is where your day-to-day -day operational intent comes in with target performance, um, target utilization, and consolidate your, your balance. So the initial placement and then day two placement are going to change based on how um, the demands are of that application, right? End users may put on, hey, we're getting a work. It may be a... a um, uh, cart, a shopping cart, and it's seeing, you know, business needs. So you're going to naturally size up for that utilization. Okay. And now this is uh, my slide and where we start to look at our demo. Now, before I jump into the demo, I do want to lay out the use case that we're going to be exploring and that we're going to be walking through in this demo. So the use case is that we want to set up cross data center workload optimization. Okay, and the question is, well, why would you want to set up something like cross data workload optimization? I've actually had a few of my customers ask me how they might go about setting up uh, this type of configuration. And the rationale is that they have disparate data centers that they want to take full utilization of that hardware. Uh, and one customer that I was working with, they had relatively close data centers, uh, but there was concerns that if one went down, that they would still want to be able to uh, intelligently move things from one location to the next. Now, this isn't necessarily a disaster recovery solution, but it can certainly help uh, mitigate contention at uh, uh, one data center or the other because it will intelligently move things across the two different data centers. Now, in order to set something like this up, 
uh, there are a couple prerequisites and we will walk through those different prerequisites in the demo, but just to call them out before we get to the demo environment, there's some prerequisites that you'll see on the left hand side here for your vCenter. Firstly, there is certain storage requirements that need to be configured and you have a couple of different options. You can either use shared data stores across your data centers. Uh, you can use data store clusters. Uh, that's the option that we went with. Uh, and then lastly, you can also use vSAN. Uh, vSAN is certainly a, a, a storage solution that offers a lot of benefits. This is just one that it can help you with. Uh, it, it is probably easier to use, easier to set up and a little bit more resilient uh, than using data store clusters. Uh, however, we did want to show something that people could utilize even if they don't have vSAN in place today. Some other things that you will have to configure, you'll have to make sure that DRS as well as storage DRS is fully automated within your vCenter for those different clusters. Uh, and of course, you're going to have to make sure that uh, the vCenter adapter for ARIA operations has read and write privileges. Now, this is typically the default when you set up uh, ARIA operations. So I won't be going through the process of showing you guys how to enable that because most uh, ARIA operations environments have that already enabled. If there are questions as to how to do that, feel free to drop it in the chat and we can, uh, we can walk you guys through that, right? Uh, some other things that we are going to need to ensure that we have enabled before we can uh, allow this to work is we have to make sure that cross data center, uh, cross data center workload optimization is enabled. Okay, uh, and again, we'll walk this, we'll walk you guys through that. And we also want to make sure that we're creating a custom data center that combines the two geographically disparate data centers. All right. Now, once we've done all of that, we are able to further ensure that our operational intent is met. So we can still em em uh, employ that operational and business intent that Deepak was mentioning earlier, right, where you can do things like utilization intent, placement intent. Do we want things balanced or consolidated? What kind of buffers do we want to have? All right. And it's going to be an AI self-driving -driv engine, again, that governs the placement of these workloads. Uh, so in this example, we see data center one and data center two, uh, and we can see that there's some violations for the risk buffer for data center two. It's a little bit overloaded. It's congested. congested. And meanwhile, data center one has uh, has some additional space that is not being utilized. So once this kicks in, and if Deepak will press the button, you'll see the rebalancing happen. Okay, very similar to what you were seeing before with Windows and Linux machines. And it's going to execute both compute and storage moves. Now, a couple of different things to call out before we get into the demo. Uh, we can use this either manually, where we manually trigger it to happen when we say that we want this to happen, or we can uh, have it automated so that it will predictively move things around based on the forecasting from ARIA operations. So that way, you're not, in, you're not encountering contention uh, because it'll move things before contention even occurs. You can also schedule this task or, again, fully automate it or manually trigger it. Uh, and now with that, I'm going to switch into my demo environment. So Deepak, if you want to relinquish the screen, thank you very much. Let me share my screen here. Now, I just want to call out. Uh, this is pre-recorded because there are some low times that uh, we have to sit through. So by pre-recording this, uh, we're able to speed up that process. Um, <clears throat> So since it is pre-recorded, I will be able to answer questions that you have in the Q&A. And with that, uh, let me just make sure that you guys can see my screen all right. Deepak, can you see that okay? Yes, sir. So I've switched into my demo environment. So you guys can Good. see my vCenter <laughs> server. I also have vRealize Operations pull up, also known as ARIA Operations. 
Within my V Center, before we even get into ARIA operations, I want to describe a little bit of the context for this environment, as well as hit on some of the major prerequisites to set up cross data center workload optimization. Now, what you'll notice within this environment, I have two different data centers, data center A01, as well as data center A02. And you'll notice that all of my workloads are residing on my first data center, my primary data center. Now, I've forced all these workloads onto this environment, so it is an overloaded environment. It is very much in need of balancing. And what we're going to do within ARIA operations is set this to optimize the data center so that these workloads are more balanced across the different data centers. In that way, they're not experiencing contention. They're not experiencing overutilization uh, with under representation of those available resources. All right. So before I jump into that ARIA operations environment, again, just want to describe some of the prerequisites as well as the context which I just went over. So some of the major prerequisites you can see within this link, which will be provided. All right. And the things that we'll see is the workloads, first of all, need to be within the same network and the same port group. So that way you can vMotion things from one data center to the next. Another thing that you need to take into consideration is that these optimization candidate clusters, they have to have one of the following data store configurations. They have to have a shared data store uh, or data store cluster. This is the option that I went with in this case. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like as well as some of the other prerequisites. Uh, you can also use vSAN and vSAN is probably the best, most intelligent way to do this. However, uh, I wanted to do a demonstration of something that you guys can do today if you have ARIA operations in, in vSphere, of course. Uh, and we didn't want to show something that would require a lot of people to uh, potentially go out and have to invest in vSAN in order to get the goodness from this uh, ARIA operations capability. Okay, so we went with the data store cluster. A couple other things that you'll have to do. vCenter adapter is configured with actions activated. So you have to have read and write privileges within ARIA operations. Uh, that, for the most part, is set up by default. All right. Uh, we also have to v have a vCenter instance with at least two data store clusters with storage DRS activated and fully automated. So that's a big prerequisite. Okay. Uh, and any non data store clusters must have DRS fully activated uh, and fully automated. All right. So I have set my DRS environment. Uh, I have set my uh, vCenter environment to have DRS fully activated and fully automated. All right. And storage vMotion also must be enabled. Okay. And again, this default is on. So unless you guys have already turned it off, uh, this is something that you should not have to worry about too much. Okay. Uh, and of course, you know, we have to have some, uh, sufficient privileges where we can see all of the uh, objects within the environment and access all the objects within the environment. Okay. So if I jump back into my environment, my vCenter environment, I'm able to see that I have uh, storage DRS fully enabled. Okay. It's fully automated. Also, if I jump into my different data store clusters, you'll notice that there's a data store cluster uh, with separate data stores in each of these two environments. And you'll also notice that storage DRS is fully automated. Okay, so I've laid down some of the groundwork for this to work. It should be pretty straightforward. And again, if you do want to consult with this link, we will provide it to you guys. Now, once we jump into ARIA operations, there are a couple different things that we will need to do before we can enable workload optimization across our data centers. The good news is this is very straightforward and we should be able to cover it within the next couple minutes. 
So from within the environment option, we go into custom data centers. And what we're going to want to do is add in a custom data center that combines the two existing separate data centers. So you can see that I have already done this. And I'll just give you a sense of what this looks like. I've created a name. I've just called this balancing data center. Uh, I've provided a quick description. And then I've selected the two different data centers. All right. I'm going to press OK. Now, once I've done this, when I go into workload optimization, you'll notice that I have that balancing data center. And you'll also notice that it's red. It has a critical alert. Uh, associated with it and it says not optimized so this means that it's a candidate for optimization and as i go into this environment we'll see a little bit more details if we look at the bottom of the page here we'll notice that region a01 is much more loaded than uh, region a02 so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to optimize this environment now, one more prerequisite that we have to ensure before we can optimize uh, is just let's take a look at the business intent. Right? This is where we're able to set different intents for the operating system. Maybe we want to have certain operating uh, systems like Linux on, on specific clusters or hosts. Uh, maybe we want to have gold tier and silver tier objects uh, to ensure that maybe our gold tier objects are running on the clusters that are more resilient uh that potentially have some sort of um that have some sort of backup and recovery system connected to it all right now the other thing that we can do from within this section is we can allow cross cluster level optimization across data center boundaries in a vCenter. so we do have to ensure that this is toggled on if it's toggled off, this will not work. So once we've ensured those prerequisites, we can press optimize now. What it's gonna do is it's going to cal calculate the workload optimization plan. It will take a few minutes here. We'll give it a minute to just get loaded. Okay, and we can see that the optimization workload placement calculator has completed. And we can see a before and after what the utilization will look like. And you'll notice that things are a lot more balanced uh, when you compare before versus after. So we're going to go ahead and say, all right, that looks good to me. That looks definitely better than it was before. Press next. We'll review the moves. It looks like it's suggesting that, hey, we're just going to move one of the virtual machines. This is potentially a pretty heavy hitter virtual machine. It will also give us the reason as to why it is selecting this particular move. Okay, we press next, start. Uh, and now the optimization process has begun and we should be able to see this in recent tasks with the task ID. Now these changes may take up to five minutes, so just be aware. I'm gonna press okay. And we're also going to speed up this video uh, so you guys don't have to sit here and watch the, the objects move over the course of the next five minutes. All right. And now that the workload optimization has completed, you'll notice that the clusters are meeting their utilization objectives they're a lot more balanced than they were before. We'll also be able to notice that if we go into history and press play, we can actually see the moves that were made. So very useful when it comes to understanding a little bit more of a complex environment where there's a lot more moves being initiated, something that is certainly worth taking a look at. So since it is optimized, we'll see that the status is optimized. We have a nice happy face logo. And there's no longer an ability to optimize this environment. However, we can either schedule or automate optimizations to happen without having to manually come in here and set the tool to 
uh, move things only when we request it. And if we move into our vSphere environment, we can see that that virtual machine has successfully moved over. And with that, that completes the demonstration portion of this power block. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to turn it over for any questions that need to be answered. Thank you guys again for your questions and for your time. Yeah, if you guys want to ask them verbally, uh, Miles or Bhavna or anybody, um, I can promote you guys if you just raise your hands rather than me just enabling the mic on for you guys. Or we can do it in Q&A. Also, if this uh, presentation and demo was just so perfectly done that you guys don't have any questions, that is quite all right as well. Oh, it looks like we have one. Uh, how often do these rebalances happen? How aggressive are the rebalances in terms of thresholds? So I'm going to answer that live. So you are able to set the, um, the aggression through operational intent. Right. How much do we want to uh, very much consolidate everything? Do we want to have things uh, very balanced? Do we want to have uh, something that's a kind of uh, middle ground between the two? So you are able to set how aggressive they are through that operational intent. Uh, now, when it comes to the first question, which is how often do these rebalances happen? Uh, it's hard for me to say because that's largely dependent on the environment. If you have a very dynamic environment, uh, then the rebalances will happen more often, I guess, especially if you've set those aggression uh, thresholds to be, if you've set those thresholds to be pretty aggressive. So uh, I recognize that that's probably not the best answer for a great question uh, because it largely, it largely depends. But I think the thing that uh, you all will want to focus on is that operational intent, and that will allow you to an extent uh, throttle how much things are being moved around. Okay. Any other questions that people might have? If there are no further questions, uh, I do. Oh, we have another question. Can you have overlapping custom data centers in VROPS? For example, one custom data references a cluster that is also in use by another custom data center. Um, I have seen people compose multiple data centers, uh, or multiple custom data centers of, of multiple uh, clusters that are in use by other custom data centers. So I don't believe that there is uh, an inability to have multiple clusters compi comprising multiple data centers. Um, I have not tested out cross data center workload optimization where you do have that double dipping occurring though. Um, so I can't say definitively if a cross cluster, cross, uh, cluster custom data center workload optimization would work in those scenarios because you'd be you'd have a lot of competing rules okay so uh <clears throat> I, I can't answer that question definitively but my instincts tell me that uh you can have multiple clusters uh comprising multiple custom data centers but setting up that cross data center workload optimization, you'll probably run into some issues. There's useful resources for people who might not have ARIA operations, uh, for people who want to learn more about it. Essentially, this is just walking through the different enablement paths that you guys uh, can explore. Uh, there's, of course, our own website. There are plenty of blogs on this topic. Now, there's a lot of useful links in here. And for those of you who are interested to learn more, who want to dig into this further, uh, feel free to reach out to us or your designated account executive. Uh, let them know that you watch this and we can provide uh, this presentation, these useful links uh, for anyone who might be interested.
Well, thank you everyone so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if there are any questions or comments or anything that comes up after this presentation, again, feel free to reach out to your different account executives. Uh, they'll be able to put you in contact with us. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from you guys and potentially working together in the future. So with that, thanks again. Any uh, last comments, Deepak, before we end this session? Nope. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And thanks for your time. And we look forward to speaking with you if you guys need more details.